everyone, it's Christy from Nightmare Toys. Happy April Fool's Day. We have our in-store signing today with Brett Wagner. To celebrate my favorite horror movie, we have Brett Wagner here. And you know him in the remake of The Crazies and as Leatherface in the 2003 remake. So, hello, Brett. Thank Hi. you for coming. Thanks for having me out here. I'm, uh, I'm excited. It's kind of a twofold thing. I'm filming a movie out here. Yes. And then I contacted you and I said, listen, I would really love to come in and maybe do a sign-in for you and come do a podcast. And here we are. Here we are. I love it. So what's the name of the movie you're filming, can you say? Yes. It's called Desert Fiends. Ooh. Um, Tom Arnold, Bai Ling. Uh, wow. The other girl we talked about in private. I can't yes. mention yes. her yes. yet, but yes. uh, really good cast and... Uh, uh, really good makeup. Eric Yoder is a, is a makeup oh, guy. Oh, okay, yeah. Out of Los Angeles, and um, I'm uh, tickled pink about all the mutants. We're mutants. I can talk about the mutants. So <laughs> I play Papa this mutant, and we have a bunch of other mutants. But I think Ooh. people are going to be. I mean, it's fun. It's it's a Sean right. C. Phillips uh, movie, and it's very fun. And I think we might be filming over here. Uh, I think so. Night. Yeah, yeah so. I think so. Oh, that's going to be fun. We can't wait to see that. So Desert Fiends. Be Desert on Fiends. the lookout for that later in the year, I'm sure, right? Yeah, so I'm, we're pretty excited about it. I think it's going to... I think it's it's fun enough, and the, the creatures are good enough that, you know, you should like it. And if you don't, Ooh. then I'll come to your house and <laughs> steal your animals and all your food out of your fridge. Will you come as Leatherface? I will come as Leatherface. All right, yes. I'm in then. <laughs> So is it a creature feature type movie? Yeah, it's kind of a hills hills uh, hills have eyes kind of uh, Vegasy desert kind of thing. Ooh, yeah. that sounds fun! Yeah. I love that. So I'm pretty excited about it. All right, well, let's get started. I have eight questions for you from our fans. Eight questions. Eight questions. All right. So first question: How did you get the nickname the Big Schwag? Oh gosh. So I used to be in pro wrestling. I was a pro wrestling manager and uh, I just, I, I used to work the bars and bouncing in Hollywood and people used, my last name is Wagner. <laughs> this Australian guy, Tom, used to call me Schwagner. <laughs> I got into pro wrestling and I didn't know what to call myself. So I said, let's call myself the big Schwag. Oh. And then it kind of stuck. I got on the TV show Monster Garage doing voiceovers for that. And I kind of tried to brand the big Schwag thing and it just kind of stuck. So some people know me as Big Schwag, and, and some people say, hey, Brett Wagner. <laughs> hey, Mr. Wagner. My mom did not like the Big Schwag thing, so she's like, just, you know, Brett Wagner, that's your given name. Let's go. Oh, oh, mom. <laughs> <laughs> well, that moves on to another question then. Um, I know there's a lot of horror fans that are into wrestling, and you said you were into the wrestling thing for a little while, so can you tell us a little about that? Yeah, uh, especially this week. It's this weekend, as you know, it's WrestleMania, mm -hmm. and people are going crazy. There's every single wrestling company there is: ROH, AEW, NXT, WWE. They're all doing shows in LA right now. In mm -hmm. fact, my wife is at a show right now, an NXT show. Oh watching wow! A, a good friend of ours, Zoe Stark, wrestle. Um, and uh, I got into pro wrestling. I was 30 years old. I just was having like a midlife crisis. I was doing bodyguard work and. I wanted to do something else. I always liked wrestling. I, I got into a school called Ultimate Pro Wrestling in Orange County, and I really I wrestled maybe two times and realized that was not my thing. And I became like this heel manager, bad guy manager, the big swag, and had my swag army, and you know got to help uh, guys like John Cena and Samoa Joe and some other guys that are obviously still wrestling today, which is amazing because it's such a tough sport. And they're transitioning now to the TV and film, and hopefully they'll throw a bone to their old buddy Big Oh, well, there you go. That's awesome. That is really cool. So, uh, you also were an announcer on the Monster Garage and Pastime. So, the next question. Uh, is drag racing a favorite hobby of yours? And <coughs> what is your favorite muscle car? Oh, gosh. Uh, gosh, that is good. A Boss 302 Mustang would be like my favorite car. Or a 70 Ooh. and a half you know, Z28, as they say in Canada, Camaro. Um, I got into, nice. yeah, I, I, I love the drag race if I have the opportunity. I was racing up in Canada for a guy, you know, come out and, 
you know, beat the TV show guy and racing top dragster and almost did 200 miles an hour. I feel if I was a little lighter, I might have hit that 200 mile an hour mark. <laughs> but um, drag racing is great. It's just a very expensive, right? I mean, it's, yeah. a, it's something you just can't... Uh, if you have a car, you can do it on the weekends, I guess, and go to your local, you know, drag strip and do something. But a, a dragster like I was racing is very expensive, and I don't have the money for it. But uh, yeah, I love the I love drag racing. Though we'll still go watch a, a bunch of shows and go to shows. We'll go to a bunch of drag races and still watch events. So good stuff. So how did you become the announcer for Monster Garage and Path Time so, then? Monster Garage, I did a documentary for Discovery Channel called The Wrestling School. John Cena's in it, Samoa Joe, and a bunch of guys. And Tom Beers, T-H-O-M. That Tom Beers who created Deadliest Catch, Ice Road Truckers, you know, all these Bering Seagull, all these great shows came to me. And he said, Schwag, can you do your wrestling voice for a TV show I'm doing called Monster Garage with this guy Jesse James? And I was like, oh, yeah, man, I does it pay and he goes yeah and I'm like let's go <laughs> so we, I did that off and on for 20 years and because of that I got to host a few episodes when Jesse has appendix burst or I forget what else happened and a guy named Rich Christensen who did this TV show uh, Pinks said I'm gonna give you oh, a yeah. I'm gonna give you a show I'm gonna give you a show and finally he got the, the show pastime which I got to go host and I did that for six years and People used to make fun of me because I didn't really drag race up until that. You know, I'm doing this show. It's all about drag racing. And then years later, after that show ended, you know, people were like, you don't even drag race. I said, well, you don't need to drag race to host a show. You just got to know how to BS and talk and, and do. And I love drag racing enough that finally this guy up in Canada said, why don't you, I'll, I'll send you to school and come race for me, you know. And I went to uh, Frank Hawley's drag racing school and learned to race in two days and it's a great it's i love it it's great it you know it's one of those things i suggest if you have a chance you know frank Holly's school there's a couple other schools out there get out there and experience it once because it's you know you're doing 160 miles an hour in some of the schools you know really quick and it's fun that's awesome you've done a lot of things the drag racing the wrestling <laughs> the movies tv you've done so, a lot of stuff you know i always i'm 55 years old so i'm, I'm getting to be an old man so i look at it that if you especially in the entertainment business, right? I'm, yes, I'm an actor, but you never want to say no to something, right? And mm -hmm. when I first started in the business, guys were like, never say no. They say, can you fly fish? You say yes. Can you do this? You just say yes, because you don't want to miss that opportunity. You know, can you, uh, it was radio before. The guy said, can you come in and help me co-host a radio show? And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I have no idea what to do. I've done podcasts, I have no idea what to do, you know, but you, you just learn it and Hopefully someone likes it and, you know, and then yeah. maybe you make a living at it. And I, I, you know, have eked by for the last 30 years doing stuff with everything. But if I was just an actor, it would be, it would be tough. I mean, you have to, you have to get some breaks and if you can get on a series or something, great. But, you know, I mean, like everybody else, I never saved any money. So cars, <laughs> cars, guns, and women, you know, so, but now I'm married, so <clears throat> we don't spend money. <laughs> I only spent uh, money on my wife. So. <laughs> I understand. I did. Um, no one knows this about me. Fun little fact, but I did drag race some. I do like muscle cars. I do like to go fast, and I did own a '76 Camaro with a 350 small block in it. Wow! There you go. Wow! So, very nice. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> wow! There you like go. Drag racing. Yeah, we also had a '77 um, Camaro and an '84 Z28 with a 400 small block. So <laughs> I do. I love did not know that. That is great. Anyway. I don't think a lot of people do. <laughs> well, now you know. So when you come down to Nightmare <laughs> Toys, folks, or Nightmare Cafe, bring your muscle car. Maybe we yes. should even. Maybe you should do, and I'll come back up. Maybe we can have like a, a car show here on a Ooh, weekend. Oh, that'd be cool. You know, and have a bunch of cars. I up love here car shows. It, yeah, that'd be awesome. That would be awesome. So my next question for you then is: Do you prefer TV or movies? Oh boy, you know. You've done a lot of both. Yeah, um, if you're in LA for any given time as an actor, and you know, and. You're going to go in for roles all the time, so it's it's usually TV or, or film. It's more TV than film, for me at least. I mean, I love doing TV. It's great. You get to go home afterwards, and you know, but I also like, for instance, The Crazies right mm -hmm. here. So this we filmed in Iowa, and we filmed in uh, Atlanta, and that was great to get out for um, you know, a month and a half and, and go film. But, you know, TV is fun, and it's, it's, a, it's a lot easier, a lot less stressful than... Uh, a major motion picture in my opinion so 
And The Crazies is also one of my favorite uh, remake movies, too. So it's fantastic. You were great in that. Yeah, I got very lucky. Thank you. With great makeup, uh, uh, Rob Hall, almost human, who uh, passed away a couple of years ago, a good friend of mine. Mine, too. And uh, yeah, yeah, and um, uh, Toby Sells, a guy out of Atlanta who was helping him, and they both did my makeup, and it was very scary and uh, a great movie. I mean, we just got got stuck between Shutter Island. And um, oh. and we got and then uh, Johnny Depp's uh, uh, Alice in Wonderland. So we did really well opening weekend, and then the next week was Johnny Depp and it the kind of El- killed oh, us. Okay, I got gotcha. you. But it's that. so set up for a sequel. I mean, I yeah. wish uh, they yeah. would. Um, I wish they do something because I have some great ideas about the, the hunters all burnt up in the back of a pickup truck seeing them again. So, oh, yes. Oh, I'm nice. Get in there. I like that. Let's do this. Let's make a sequel happen. All right, so another question. We're going to move on to Leatherface questions now. Yeah. So do you agree that the 2003 Leatherface is the meanest one out of all of them? Oh, 100%. So, let's, so the deal with this is I got cast as Leatherface, mm-hmm. and uh, we get into filming, and uh, maybe the second full day of filming, I got heat stroke. Okay, so, so that's um, what it was. I was wondering because some people, I noticed online some of it said heat stroke, but then some article said you had an accident yeah no i got it's so i got heat okay. stroke dragging it was so hot in austin in the house um, i can imagine black mold everywhere too by the way uh yeah. but um i got heat stroke and then um i went outside and drank like six gatorades you know and then i felt good but when you get heat stroke and your body's deprived of water my muscles in my back just seized up and so if you see me slamming that door i was in so much pain you know, oh, no. and then Andrew came in and did a great job, yeah. and he was so brutal. And uh, yeah, but the movie one hundred percent. Marcus Nispel, our director, was great, and everybody. Uh, the DP Daniel Pearl, who worked on the original uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and it, it's just a very brutal. Now, not that I don't like, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of the series. So yeah, you know, R. A. Mahailoff and these guys, Dan Yeager, and uh, now Mark Burnham and the Netflix mm-hmm. one. But still, uh, yeah, ours is definitely the most uh and most brutal there it, ever has been i agree i totally agree and it's another it's another remake movie that's just fantastic oh yeah it really is i just love it i mean if you watch the original there's really not a lot of blood in it right no there's not but for its time it's still it's still if you look at the if you really look at the series it's probably the best one because it was the first gunner hansen was so, dirty, yeah gunner hansen was so good and the yeah. rest of the cast was so good and it was so fresh and so new and it you know, really the dawning of uh, these serial killers. And really, if you want to look at it, it was like the first really, oh, my God. You know, and it was one of those things where this could really happen, too. It wasn't like some science fiction thing. It was like, well, there is people out there probably yeah. like that. So Yeah, you never know. Yeah. Well, my question is then, how was it for putting on the Leatherface costume mask all that nine yards for the first time, how was that? Like, were you like, oh my God, I'm Leatherface right now? Yeah, like, I was kind a little of freaking nervous. out a little bit? So or? when I when I booked the gig, I mean, the first person I called was R.A. Mihailov because he's oh, a good friend of mine. Oh, that's awesome. And then I called them a thousand people in like, you know, five minutes. And then uh, the casting director called back and said, by the way, don't tell anybody. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I gotta, now I gotta call everybody back and say, keep your mouth shut. <laughs> um, yes, at first, of course, when I booked it, I had two months before, so uh, before we started shooting. So, um, yeah, I was a little nervous because it's like, how do you, how, what do you, what is your spin gonna be on it? I mean, am I gonna give, give Gunnar Hansen justice? And, but once you get down there, you know, the stuff's on, you just get in the killing mode. And, you know, I wish I would have been able to finish the movie, of course. and and done all the rest of the stuff because I had some ideas on some stuff that I would have brought to Marcus and Marcus Nispel and only working with him a day and a half seemed pretty pretty cool and so I think you know I could have it would have been interesting to see what my what I would have brought to the table but you know Andrew was just brutal Mm -hmm. and the movie was just well written Scott Kozar who did a write rewrite on it and everything else was it the script was great and everybody in it was great Jessica you know Mm -hmm. The whole nine yards. So. Arlie Ermey. Ar- well, I mean, Gosh. Arlie Ermey is just... And the movie wouldn't have been the same without Arlie. No, I agree with you. No, he really rounded out the movie. Yeah, it wouldn't have been the same. His it would have been amazing. different. It would have been interesting. I w- you know, I would love to see who they actually had audition for that part if they just said, let's just give it to Arlie if he says yes. I would love... I mean, it would have been interesting to see who else was up for that because then he would have been... Able- but still, no, I don't Good think question. anybody would have been able to... Uh, 
to take his spot. No, I don't think so either. I think we can all probably pretty much agree on that. Yeah. (laughs) One last question for you. So, what is your favorite scary movie? Oh my gosh. That's a tough one because I'm a big, I mean, I got into acting because I loved horror movies. I mean, my first horror movie I ever watched was Night of the Living Dead, you know, uh, George Romero's. Yes. And my mom said, that's a very scary movie. And uh, then, uh, you know, I I like some, I mean, Dawn of the Dead is probably my, 78 is probably my favorite horror movie of all time. I just love the whole thing. And I've got to meet Ken Forey. He's cool, isn't he? A whole bunch of times. And what a great guy. Yeah. So you like uh, zombies. I love zombies. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I, 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 children shouldn't play with dead things. A very campy uh, horror movie. I mean, shockwaves. I love, I love all this stuff. I mean, I also love the Universal. You know, your, your Frankenstein's, your, your vampires. Near Dark. It's oh. probably one of my favorite, uh, favorite horror movies of all time. It's fun, and Bill Paxton and Lance Henriksen are so friggin' good. Yeah, totally. But there, it, it, there's just so much. You know, Shaun of the Dead. I'm a big fan of Shaun of the Dead. I love, <laughs> I love my little horror. I love a little humor in my horror. So, Fright Night, for God's sakes. I mean, it's just. But Dawn of the Dead, yeah. Fulci Zombie is yeah. another one I love. You know, Zombie's the, good. The, the splinter to the eye, and and I'm a poster guy, so I have. It's a great poster. I mean, I would need a, a a million. It used to be easy. It used to be cheap to frame stuff. It's not anymore. No, you it's guys not. know because you have stores here that you. <laughs> got to frame stuff for and, yep. and I, I have hundreds of posters I can't frame unless I win the lottery <laughs> and buy a bigger place so but yeah um yeah Dawn of the Dead Dawn of the Dead yes. awesome that's a good choice yeah thank you yeah I like that choice all right that's a wrap with our in-store signing with Brett Wagner thank you for coming out Brett we really appreciate it and thank you everybody for coming out Thank you so much for coming out and enjoying us today. It was a great time. And man, if you get a chance, make sure you come down here, as I said.